What's up, Shred Sexies? Welcome back, Death of the Fingers. Changing it up a little bit here uh, with the sneaky Saturday surprise, I guess. <clears throat> but uh, I've been asked a million questions about plugins and stuff like that. And some basic uh, sort of gear questions, and I'm going to answer them right now, just before Christmas. Uh, just in case people get uh, some money or a gift certificate and whatnot, and they want to spend it, are they 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 are interested in sort of you know, getting into the recording game or whatever that is. We're going to go over all that good stuff at the end, of course. But uh, I want to start the video off by just talking about some basic stuff that I hear, some misconceptions and stuff. And I just want to throw my two cents in because, yeah, why not? <clears throat> Let's listen to the old boomer. <laughs> whatever. Anyways, uh, guitars, expensive guitars. Listen, <clears throat> I would never spend more than $2,000 on a guitar. Now there's a couple caveats there. If it's the guitar that you've fallen in love with and that's the guitar, then I guess you're going to spend however much money it is you need to spend to get it. You know, but if you're like, I need a guitar <clears throat> for like work purposes where I'm doing recordings and I'm gigging and stuff like that, then I wouldn't spend more than $2,000 on the guitar and I would just spec it out. Really, if you wanted to, I would do it both ways where you just get like a cheap guitar that's got a really, really good body and a lot of the functionality that you're looking for. <clears throat> got it for electronics and basically redo it and put some better hardware on it and you're pretty much back in the game. Uh, they're all manufactured in the same place over in Asia and stuff like that in Indonesia probably so honestly just uh, It's all smoke and mirrors and gimmicks and marketing and stuff like that. Yes, there are some expensive guitars I think you can tell which ones are the really expensive ones But your average ones the ones that they're selling for five or six thousand dollars are not that expensive. Okay, they're just It's silliness and it's sort of like, you know trying to drive this 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 image that uh, there's some sort of exclusivity by having this guitar. No, it's not because you see the same guitar selling on reverb for like half the price or less. <clears throat> Just like my guitar dropped down when I bought it, you know, like instantly and then it dropped down again when it was just whatever, nobody cared anymore. And I was like, I didn't buy it because I thought it was going to have a good resale value. It was just a solid instrument that satisfied all of the check boxes, had all of the necessary sort of like set up with the, the Evertune and the Fishman. So I was like, good to go. <clears throat> good company. It's a well-made guitar place like you wouldn't believe. I'm happy. End of story, okay? So it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a really expensive guitar. Don't let the purists and the sort of like the elitists sort of um, influence you into thinking you do. And just remember, <clears throat> sometimes those expensive guitars and stuff like that, it's, it's a bit of a scam. <laughs> Be very careful. Right now, the, and the next one is obviously the next huge one is amps <clears throat> or like the amp modeler. If you're gigging and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> it really depends, you know what I mean? Like, uh, most bands are going with the amp modeler because it's more consistent. It's easier to carry around. Um, <clears throat> you can take it on the plane with you kind of situation. Uh, it's... the. Uh, <laughs> Amps are amazing kind of situation too, but the thing is, it's like the digital technology is getting so close now that you can't tell the difference. But it really depends on application. And I would say to almost anybody that I would be prepared if you can and have the luxury, be prepared to do both. So you have like a 212 combo with, a, with the app modeler, floor model, like maybe just the light version. You know, it just gets the job done, a few effects. You know, it's mostly all the IRs, that's the basically the simulated cabinets are going to make all the difference in your sound and stuff like that, and just a delicate balance of EQ and uh, effects, and you can have an incredibly lush sound, especially with the 212, one of their little, uh, <clears throat> you know, whatever hybrids that they have there that basically sort of optimizes this IR technology. Uh, it sounds pretty damn good. So, but at the same time, I remember watching a video where Tom Quayle was playing through like the 50th Jam uh, Jubilee Marshall had in a uh, cabinets thing and it just sounded just as amazing. So, I mean, it's very difficult to say that's not a question that can be settled. 
it depends on preference again you know if you got to have it you got to have it but again remember it's it's like a luxury item think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish do you need to do or have access to a lot of different sounds and be able to sculpt sounds then an amp sort of is going to like definitely fall far short because it starts getting incredibly expensive buying pedal after pedal after pedal after pedal even if you turn around and sell them off too because there's just too many pedals but <clears throat> as far as the the digital sort of medium is concerned just doing that plus being able to output just the the standard sort of like uh uh, just the guitar sound and whatnot, and then using reamping technology just opens up a whole nother door. So, <clears throat> you know, of course, I use the amp modeling because to me it just makes more sense. But again, I don't think it really makes a difference. They're both so close, and I've heard them both played live now, and I couldn't tell the difference between the amp modeler and the other guitar player. So, I mean, <clears throat> it sounds pretty good. But I'll say this. They can be prone to sort of like a little bit of a situation. So I'm just going to say straight out, there's there's almost no replacing the, the sort of like hands-on reliability of an amp just being like, you hit down on the lead channel and it's, it's lead. <clears throat> if you kept your pedal board small with just a few effects and some stuff like that, then I'm sure you could do just fine. So it is what it is. And of course, the last one is just like the music theory stuff. It's like how much music theory do you have to learn? Do you have to be like the master music theory theorist? <clears throat> yeah, I'm totally high right now, whatever. <laughs> um, you got to know the basics and then you got to know how to apply the basics. Here's the thing. It takes more than just to be like, okay, the notes of C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Right? <clears throat> in a lot of ways, that's just abstract knowledge to most people. They couldn't be like, all right, show me the note C within like 0 .003 seconds on the G string. Go! Right? And then they're just going to sit there and look at you and be like, ah! <clears throat> right? So, and that's, that's where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Right? So that's where the marrying of the sort of the simple sort of theoretical knowledge actually starts to take on a real world challenge where you're like, OK, I actually have to be able to sort of put these two pieces like a coordinate, <laughs> you know, your X, Y, if you will, or whatever, longitude and latitude and just go there. And here's the thing. We're going to talk about it on Sunday, uh, but essentially the the um, the idea is, is that <clears throat> You're moving the modes around and stuff like that. They don't just stay in one static position. And that's what gives you all the different sounds and flavors and stuff like that. We were having a bit of a discussion on it in one of the previous videos on the Ionian mode. But the the fact of the matter is, is it's like <clears throat> water. That position has three different states. You know what I mean? Like a uh, gas or a liquid or whatever solid so and maybe one of them is going to be completely incompatible with what uh you know the environment is that you're existing right so the ice the block of ice is not going to work <laughs> so uh you have to switch it up and know when to be like i need to be either water or vapor here but then i'm like okay well now i can be vapor or a solid right so vapor is kind of like the in-between the fuzzy stuff like diminished or whatever else it is but the other two states, they basically exist <clears throat> and you have to sort of know how to blend them together to get the right sound so that your playing doesn't become boring and predictable. But a lot of people don't understand that. They sort of see, stay rooted in this one sort of rudimentary idea and stuff like that. And that's where the theory comes into massive effect because you start to see like, I can use the same basic music theory and make a few tweaks start creating a little rule book up in my mind where I can make exceptions and stuff. Well, when I'm doing this, I can do this little thing. Here's a little rule attached to when you're in this position, Aeolian, step down a half step and play, <clears throat> you know, a first inversion or whatever it is, sort of arpeggio kind of deal. And you're like, okay. And then you start practicing that. It just becomes sort of like ingrained and so again, that sort of real world music knowledge now has an actual real world application on the fretboard. And so music theory helps you marry those two ideas up. 
from the mind to the physical, which is coming out your fingers type situation. Here's the thing. If you don't have it solidly upstairs in the old memory banks, I can tell you right now, you're constantly going to struggle on the fretboard with sort of the control of your thoughts and the control of your mind with respect to music. And that's going to yield obviously the best results with respect to control at the fingers. So that's the end of that. <clears throat> this controls this, right? So if you can't sort of think rationally about it up here and you're trying to do it in the abstract, now you need to have some guidelines and you need to be able to define some simple terms if I just start using really fancy words in a conversation, you just end up getting lost. You're like, I have no idea what this person is talking about. Make sense? Let's get into these plugins. All right, Shred Sexies, let's get into this. <clears throat> Essentially, uh, you know, I'm, all, I'm constantly being asked about uh, gear and, and, and software and stuff like that, what I've, I've been using and what I get into. So I'm going to go through all my favorites today, starting with the freebies here. <clears throat> Just uh, go grab this stuff. The first one is Kazrog. This is the uh, K-Clip. It's basically a clipper. Uh, it's free. It's awesome. Just jam on the link button and start making adjustments here on the input. Just drive the input up. It'll drive and it'll just clip off the top. You don't really need to use the soften function. It works amazingly well. It's very transparent and it does an excellent job. It's free. Nails it. I use this on every mix. This is the clipper I use. Done. <clears throat> uh, if you're looking for a really good sort of like uh, metering, I, I use this free version of Uline. <clears throat> it's great. Does the job. I have no complaints whatsoever. So another really great tool for free. Uh, it's very detailed if you need it to be. I have like the expensive paid wave one too. So uh, I prefer this one actually because it's just a little easier to use and a little bit more accurate. Killer, of course, this one's been on a million lists. The super massive, they have like three or four. Actually, there's like the frequency one. There's a space modulator, another one. <clears throat> Basically, uh, these guys are the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, delays and stuff like that. And this one is as good as anything you're going to get for, for spending money on it. It's incredibly versatile. It has every function you can need and a massive, absolutely massive library of sounds to just start working with. So, no brainer. <clears throat> this is another delay I've been using. Uh, once you start to manipulate this twist rate like that, uh, you get like this weird sort of like oscillation kind of idea. See that? That's like amazingly <clears throat> useful. You can select your frequency range, whatever the delay is really affecting. You can increase and decrease the plateau there. Uh, the only downside is you have to do a calculation <clears throat> with respect to the delay if you want it to sort of sync up with the tempo, but that's no big deal. There are <clears throat> delay calculators on the internet that you can just use. Finito, right? And so this is uh, an, uh, this is one of my favorite plugins. It's free, and if they make a few upgrades, I would definitely buy this. This is uh, a piece uh, piano one, sorry, that I got recently. <clears throat> this is an amazing sounding piano for free. <laughs> it's amazing, but probably the best piano sound I've heard that you can get for free. This is as real as it gets. <clears throat> it's really detailed. It's got a lot of useful functionality. And this paired up with like another piano sound, or I use it often with uh, another plugin. I didn't add it on this one, the Atmos uh, piano. <clears throat> Those two paired up together and just subtly dialed in is an incredibly effective tool. So this guy right here, Boz Audio Labs. Uh, fantastic. It's the, uh, what is it? The New York L26. <clears throat> so super awesome. Then there's this Sonosaurus one. It's called Paul Stretch. You basically can upload a file into here. I'm sure you can capture it too, but I just like to upload the file. So I'll record something and then just export it and then just upload it into here. And then you can start messing with this stretch function and a whole bunch of other <clears throat> parameters here. It's absolutely ridiculous, okay, how much stuff you can do with this thing. But um, you start really messing with this stretch amount here and you create these absolutely ridiculous soundscapes of, of eeriness. This is an incredibly useful tool. 
that can basically import any sound and you can take that and turn it into something completely different and then use that as the impetus for doing something else. So as a free sort of tool for like, you know, computer uh, sort of like oriented music or anything where you need to sort of like not necessarily use a synthesizer, you want to create more of like a, an atmospheric kind of idea. This thing is amazing. Plus, if you use it on, oops, if you use it on like other <clears throat> uh, instruments and stuff, you can get some really cool effects too. Just reduce the stretch part down to almost like insignificantly and then just make a, a few subtle. Plus, you can use this in conjunction with your, like run it in parallel with, an, uh, with your original track and then increase the stretch and it gets this really cool effect. You can then add delay or reverb to it and it can create this really cool sort of like envelope around. Think of like a Gaussian blur, but for music. <clears throat> so this is a, a fantastic uh, plugin. Again, Paul Stretch by Sonosaurus. Absolutely killer. Next is what I call the core stuff. Now, in this case, I'm using Black Rooster Audio. Okay, these guys down here. <clears throat> but UAD makes this. There's Slate Digital Audio. They make the this kind of stuff. There's, you know, Waves does it. There's a whole bunch of them that do this kind of stuff. You'll probably recognize like this, this guy right here, uh, which is a very famous EQ, essentially, for bottom and top end. So they all make these types of plugins with uh, the different types of compressors here. <clears throat> I'm going to go through some of my favorites. This, and the, the, the ones you should be on the hunt for, essentially. I have a matching pair of a vintage preamp here and then the, the compressor that goes with it. And this is an amazing combination for so many things. You can sort of like sculpt the sound, but of course you get the, the initially the compressed sound, but then you can just add this top end and volume sort of boost here. It's <clears throat> really killer for, for the analog audio stuff. So this is a great one. I would highly recommend again, Mostly, if you're like me, I, I prefer the vintage stuff. I, I whoops, <clears throat> I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, what's going on there? Oh, I'm just being a crackhead. I don't want to. Uh, <clears throat> basically, get too far into the weeds. You know, I want to basically use the saturation of this unit more so than anything to help shape my sound. I'm barely touching some of these functions at all besides the attack and release and whatnot and the threshold. <clears throat> you're not doing a whole lot of, you know, actual like top end. You're not doing anything like that. You're just doing a tiny little bit here, <clears throat> maybe dialing in or out of some of the mids or the same thing with the bass and then just to choosing the tube style. It's mostly just driving the output a bit more. That was a mistake. I, I thought these things were could be used as like an EQ. No, you want to get like a balanced sound so that when you start driving the output, if, if there's too much high end, you can kind of dial it back or there's not enough. You got to dial it in. So that's a food for thought. You want these things to run like, I guess, in a digital sense, pretty hot. <clears throat> Nothing too crazy. You don't want to really start pinning it unless that's what you're looking for. Uh, you know, just bouncing between the minus three to sort of zero range. But uh, that's going to be incredibly important for getting a really full and rich sound. That's a big thing I learned. Uh, then this tape delay. <clears throat> this is uh, an essential one. You're going to find this all over the place. This one's killer. Uh, again, these, this EQ, there's another one too that's just a single strip, but this one here is by far the most useful for, again, just the perfect amount of low end and top end control where you can boost and sort of cut. And by boosting and cutting at the same frequency at the same time, <clears throat> you get like this cool other effect. Uh, some sort of two-way compressor. This one is particularly sick. It works great. <clears throat> and again, this FET, which is, uh, again, another emulation of another analog piece from, the, from back in the day. I absolutely love this bad boy. It is so smooth and so juicy. And this is one of the secret weapons here. <clears throat> the Halloween edition. This one on guitars, on bass, on vocals. Uh, the top end shelf here is particularly juicy. This nice little addition of having this, this low cut really helps you dial it in. And of course, the big enchilada here, this crank, just fattens it up, right? You just dial back, either trim it down and <clears throat> crank it up, and then you get like this instant sort of body. And then just dial in a bit of that top end sheen. Whoop bam 
<clears throat> your stuff is sounding absolutely blistering. I usually just set the trims zero. Uh, I usually don't have the gain <clears throat> adjusted either and I just start cranking it. I just adjust the volume of the track going into it so that when I start cranking it, it just gets to the desired loudness that I want. So that's uh, the core series stuff. Basically, you know, the compressors, the, the, the preamps, you can have delays, there's reverbs too. <clears throat> Tons of them, you know what I mean? The, these sort of like standard studio tools, uh, the 2A, the 3A, right? <clears throat> this sort of FET compressor, the opto compressor, I have so many more, we're gonna look at some. And then of course, like a, a preamp or something else like that, you know what I mean? These are all essential tools you're gonna use all the time in all of your mixes. Definitely have those ones. And then finally, I have all the mixing tools. Now I use all the plug-in alliance stuff. Now I used to be a Waves guy, but when they sort of did like some weird stuff, went to a fully subscription model, they annoyed me. So I was like, see ya, <clears throat> I don't wanna do that. But uh, this uh, plug-in alliance is every, every bit as good, if not better. This particular function here of the, the TMT inside is a lifesaver. It just basically simulates an analog desk. It's absolutely awesome. So that is one of the big, big advantages. Plus it's got some other functionality here, this mono maker, the stereo width. I don't use them too much, but it's nice to know that they're there. This little correlation meter too is quite nice as well. So this, uh, this <clears throat> particular EQ is sick as hell, okay? It's just awesome. You want to take some to the next level, boom. If you want to make something wider, <clears throat> this is the best tool for that. You just take the bandwidth and drive it over here to like anything after 10 to about uh, 13 or 14. It just spreads it right out. Uh, it's very simple. It's got really great functionality for low, mid, high and stuff like that. A lot of people, uh, you know, it, this, this plugin kind of slips by them, but I'm telling you, this thing is absolutely killer for guitars and for spreading out your mix. If you have like a lot of guitars like I do in my mixes where there could be three, four, five parts, having this tool of bandwidth to be able to separate out the guitars so that you get the full maximum juiciness. <clears throat> Essentially do the same thing over here with these with the cuts too. I like to do a boost here at this one, somewhere, I don't know, around in the, f between four to like 700 range. And I like to do a little cut on the other one here around, you know, the 15 to, to 12K <clears throat> kind of situation. And then uh, you can just adjust this wide and sharp sort of frequency range to really tighten it up. This is an amazingly simple but very powerful tool. At first, I didn't know how to use it at all. <clears throat> now it's my go-to. It's uh, I've I ditched all the other stuff, all the stereo widening stuff, all that crap gone. This is the only thing I use for that, so it's absolutely amazing. This is uh, one of the saturation units that I think you sh every person should have. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, it goes without saying. <clears throat> I like to use this on parallel tracks, like parallel mixes, and I like to use it on my master. Done. <clears throat> this is my favorite channel strip here of all the ones I've used, this Focusrite FC or SC or whatever it is. This thing is just absolutely bombing with this little sort of like filtration <clears throat> here that you can send into the expander slash gate plus the, com the compressor. It's just so incredibly powerful and useful. And then the it's a very musical EQ. It just keeps it simple again, this TMT inside, letting you choose so many different channels. Look at this, you just keep going like up to 27 different types of flavors and varieties and whatnot. A little bit of onboard saturation for for some extra smoothness to your compression and whatnot. I don't know what this V-Gain does. It's pretty interesting when you use it in certain respects, but <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like it's just deep, it's deep as hell. And it just sounds awesome on everything. This is my go-to on almost everything. But next to it, of course, is this SSL. <clears throat> you can either go with the E or the D type, right? So it's just really nice. It's just fantastic. Uh, but I find myself, oops, sorry, using this Focusrite one a lot more. This one sounds really great on bass guitar, on drums, uh, on a couple other instruments, but this thing just works on like literally everything, so it's so easy to work with. One of my favorite compressors here, this <clears throat> townhouse or whatever it is, it's just great analog juiciness. Another one, this one slips by a lot of people, this Alicia is absolutely killer 
with the soft clip function down here and then it's just real real smooth excellent on your master okay so that one's one of my favorites this is another saturation unit I love the simplicity of this just dial it in <clears throat> and you can you can sort of take it out so you just start dialing in the saturation I like to get around one or two of the yellow you know and then just bring the volume up bring in a bit of this dial in your your uh, you know a 10k here for your top and then uh, whatever you're going to use for the low pass or the high pass here and done <clears throat> and let me tell you this really makes a huge difference and then this one I've been using these in serial this one here I use second but I go through this first which is another saturation unit this magic knob here and the drive just adds a really really killer level of top end and stuff and fatness <clears throat> without like having to just obliterate the low end it's really good so if your mix sounds good and you throw this bad boy on holy smokes I do two of them I use it in like a mix situation but I also have just one channel alone where I run the entire mix through it to use just this magic and drive because the top end on it is just so crispy and juicy it's great <clears throat> I slept on this one for a couple years. Stupid. <clears throat> uh, this <clears throat> Shadow Hills one, this is my go-to on the two bus. I think uh, you could go either way. This is a real workhorse or, a horse, sorry, of a compressor that I use a lot. <clears throat> this iron one is one of my favorites if you're just like, okay, I can only get one compressor. I only have enough money to get one compressor. I would get this. This is an amazing all-around compressor. It does everything. This little functionality up here of choosing the different kind of configurations and stuff is very useful to get like the perfect little sound. It's very smooth, very simple. Again, this TMT inside with all this extra uh, sort of control and functionality. You can't go wrong, honestly. This is one of my favorite EQs here, <clears throat> especially on sort of just your standard analog instruments. I find dialing this in and just bringing up that low end while you go totally crazy the other side by just cutting the other one out. That instantaneously will make almost any instrument sound absolutely humongous. You'll probably be dialing the output back, okay? And then it's got this really nice top end at the 20K. <clears throat> Just dial it in a bit and then focus it up a bit. Clean it up again. This this particular setting at uh, 4.8K. Just dialing it in a bit here. Really nice. Really killer on guitars and stuff. As far as EQ goes, uh, this is my bad boy right here. This Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff or whatever it is. This thing is wicked. <clears throat> I'm sure the uh, fab filter is just as good. I love the functionality of uh, multiple different choices here for, for the different types of sounds that this thing actually produces in the mix one or with analog kind of situation. And then when you get into these situations, you have like this, not only like emulations of famous sort of... Uh, like as far as the EQ curves are concerned for different types of consoles, like the E-Type, the G-Type, those are the SSL, then I don't know, what I think that's Neve. <clears throat> and then other ones, there's some Vintage Tube, that they're all great. And then just the regular ones that they have, the Notch, Low Pass, High Pass, the Bell, High Shelf, Low Shelf kind of situation. It is unreal how precise and how amazing this thing works. Uh, I, having used it now, I could never go back to anything else less than this, what they call third gen sort of, uh, <clears throat> EQ, precision EQ. And honestly, of the ones I've seen, this one is at least on par with the fab filter. If not, more people are into this one. And I, I can understand why, because honestly, it is absolutely phenomenal. Your mixes will be transformed with a tool like this, but it's 150 bucks. So uh, <clears throat> keep that in mind. But if you're going to be like, I'm getting something special and you don't have something like this or the fab filter, or I'm sure there's probably a couple other ones that you could get into and other tools like that. Soothe would be good too. The Oaken Sound one, I think it is. Soothe it's called, uh, would be another one worth spending the 200 bucks on. But if you're just looking for a straight up EQ, this one also does the dynamics too, right? So of course you have all the compression and whatnot right on board. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> you can't ask for any more. This is another plugin. Didn't really understand how to use it. This is again one of these parallel tracks where you're going to run your whole mix through it. Let me tell you, just dialing that. Whoops, what are you doing there? We're dialing this bad boy in like that. Will make your mix sound 100% more crushing. <clears throat> and then just messing around with this sort of EQ section, sort of learning how to uh, use these switches in your the proper application and whatnot. You'll hear it. Wow. Wow. This changed my mix 
<clears throat> once I started running everything through this instead of just individual instruments, I was like, what if I just run the whole mix through it? Once I started doing that, that was a game changer. And this one here, <clears throat> again, I absolutely love this. This is one I use on the bass. This is the only real plugin I use for bass on the sort of like the polishing part. So, you know, this thing is amazing. The end, <clears throat> the type of low end you get, and I really like this uh, factory preset here with the bass guitar of the super fat bass, and then just adjust from here. But honestly, it has all of this functionality on the side. I, it doesn't even matter to me. You have all these different types of, of enhancement of the bass and whatnot. It's crazy functional. And of course, yes, it's got a lot of factory presets and stuff like that for all kinds of different uh, ideas and whatnot. But honestly, this thing was another game changer in terms of just controlling the low end of your mix and really getting it f big and fat and huge and robust. It's mm, top shelf. Right. So that pretty much wraps it up for the plugins and stuff like that. Nice. Well, I hope those help you, uh, <clears throat> you know, essentially get a little further in your own recordings, record your own music, be creative play your own solos. You know, if you feel like you really want to learn somebody else's solo uh, just so you can learn some techniques, and I've done it too, sure, do it. But for the most part, be experimenting on your own, trying to make your own grooves up, make your own licks up, make your own sort of like phrases. Embrace your own creativity, your uniqueness, <clears throat> you know, and sort of try to bring it all together. Try to become an amalgamation of all your influences, but then spit it out in your own sort of like very definitive way that is the way forward plus recording will help you basically refine that <clears throat> a lot you don't have to be paganini you don't have to be like uh, the next you know world-class producer i've heard tons of compelling music all the time from people in this channel and stuff that like hey check this out that sounds awesome i don't really listen to it too much unless the recordings are so bad you can't really tell but <clears throat> for the most part they're pretty good and that's just it as long as it's done competently people will listen to your artistic expression and that's what you're really working on and that's what recording the music helps you do it helps you write it down if you will which gives you the opportunity to review it afterwards and be like you know i could have refined that and then you start to get into ways of refining how you're playing and practicing and then of course at the end <clears throat> you finally become the musician and the guitar player that you want to be you don't need teaching materials or anything else i learned everything i needed to learn just by forcing myself to sort of like try to understand these topics i did not get a teacher i just did it on my own because i'm stubborn and stupid but <clears throat> There's a lot of tools out there, but don't get sidetracked by basically watching videos. Try to absorb some sort of small idea that's pretty general, and then try to find a way of warming that into your practice session where you're like, okay, that's what I'm doing. That makes sense in relation to whatever it was your like chromaticism or enclosures or triad arpeggios or whatever it is. Nice. Well, I wish you all happy holidays, Merry Christmas and all that good stuff or whatever it is you guys celebrate. Have a good time with your family. Enjoy some food. <clears throat> See you on Sunday. Of course, on Tuesday, there'll be more goodness. And the new year, we're going up to three videos. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Get your booties on. See you in the next one.